Would you like to get this belt with a buckle? The giveaway details are in the description. There are three gorgeous details drawn on the stainless steel sheet that I need to somehow cut out. I won't make my job harder and just punch them out by hand. This is the way. The video is about how to make something with your own hands. Hence, I will make it with my own hands. I start shaping the back plate. This is the stainless steel 1 mm thick, so just a simple bend can't be done without heating. But more complicated geometry can be achieved with the help of heating. This is why I am using a propane cutter with oxygen. This cutter has a steel cutting mode, but I am using only the heating mode. Gorget is a part of armor that covers the neck of the upper part of the body of the humanoid. So the plate needs to recreate this body shape. Especially for the homo sapiens that are watching the video, I am showing the method that even these primitive creatures can master. You heat it up and punch the heated part with a hammer. But the evolution of the Eucroreptilians allows me to do this. The back plate has the needed geometry, so I am starting to work on the front details. Unlike the traditional furnace, the cutter allows for quick heating near the tools. It's important for thin details, as they quickly cool down in the air. But you need to be careful. It is easy to overheat the steel and then it becomes fragile or can drip and create a hole. There were no cutters in the Middle Ages, so this is why some historians believe that armor was impossible to make, but we've been making it even in the 15th century. Like this. Checkmate alternatively gifted historians. The basic shape is done, now I need to plenish it. I have an easy task for you, please count the number of hammer strikes that are needed to produce such a gorget. British scientists tried doing it, but lost count at Facton. The speed of work is four times tricky compared to the regular human speed. During planishing, the detail starts to curve, so I need to get it back in shape at the end of such an operation. The patterns were made from scratch, so there is a little excess material that needs to be removed. The edited patterns will be posted on Patreon. Here you can see how all three details of the gorget look once they were assembled. And I still can't see your likes under this video. God has created Eve from Adam's rib, and I am creating the rib in the middle of the gorget, while people still can reproduce naturally. To do this, you take your chisel and put into the lips of the wise. Then you start to forge the U-shaped tip. The most important thing is to aim for the correct spot on the detail on your chisel. I use both sides of the hammer for such work. This way of creation is also good, because you plenish both sides of the rib. Finally, you rub your detail to make sure that the work was done well and everyone is satisfied. Luke Skywalker once destroyed the Death Star and I turned paper into stainless steel. Yes, our achievements are not equal. To destroy is easier than to create. Next in line is the production of shoulders. In the course of making the convex shape and the edge of the sheet will flute. It is dangerous because these flutes can crack, so they should be flattened in time. It's better to do it in a curved pit with the bottom. This way you can flatten the material and plenish it at the same time. The first shoulder piece is done. I'll make the second one using the force of the Jedi. You can see with your own eyes that the force of the Jedi is helpless here. So I come back to the fail-proof magic of the ancient Ukrainians. The way this is, the Padawans should learn now. The lower part of the shoulder piece is cylindrical, so I plenish it on the angle. And the upper part is convex, so I need to plenish it on the hemisphere. After the surface has been flattened, I start shaping a step-like rib. To do this, I use a sharp chisel with a rounded rib. But I strike with a hammer not on a chisel, but 3-4 millimeters away from it. 
This way the material is lowered and the step is shaped. To make the rib sharper I use the hammer with a flat surface and shape the edge. It's time to work on the next detail, the shoulder guards. To make my job easier I didn't cut off the piece from sheet completely. This way it is easier to hold it and bend the edge. I am checking that the shoulder piece detail fits the guards and separate it from the sheet. Now I can assemble everything. There is some excess material and it's not a problem, it is the way. Elon Musk still can't send people to Mars, but right now I am making the armor of Mandalorian proto-Ukrainians to colonize the nearest planets, so subscribe to find out who achieves their goal first. But before the colonization of the planets, I need to sort out the hole on the short problem. To do this I need leather, a sewing kit, a regular ruler and long ruler. This will be an apron of the blacksmith. I marked the future leather straps with the help of the long ruler. Also, I'm sketching out the future apron's shape. After cutting out all of the details I sew them all together. I've decided to add attachments for the tools that would be convenient to have on hand. I get back to work on the shoulders. I mark 4 mm from the edge of the guard with calipers and start bending the edges. This is rolling. It will reinforce the edge of the detail and make it less sharp. Some arm movements could lead to scratching your head by the edges of the guards. The basic shape is done, so I check how everything fits me in the final assembly. Everything is ok, so I move on to work on the small details. The gorget will fasten with the help of the special button with spring. The spring is forged out of titanium, it is easier than making the correct spring tempering by myself. I take the 9mm drill and drill a hole, because the diameter of the button is 8mm. I'm adding the special tabs, the edges of the gorget will slide under them. This will be a second thingy that you need to press in order to unfasten the gorget. It would be impossible without it. The principle of such a button, the spring and two barrels, was really used on the medieval helmets and other parts of the armor. I'm additionally adding the additional segments just because I can. I know that the many people learn from these kinds of videos, so I'm a bit worried I'm overdoing it with the magic of the ancient Ukrainians. So I'll try and show the human method more often. Here I'm using a drill and 3mm drill bit. And no exaggeration with the magic of ancient Ukrainians. And here I will make a cutout for the sliding rivet. This method is also borrowed from the middle edges. One side of the plate was attached by the sliding rivet and the other side was on the leather straps. Hence, even a full plate armor was quite immovable. After the holes, cutouts and leather straps are done, I can move on to the grinding and polishing. After a slight grinding, I move on to the felt disc and start with the polishing. I leave the hammer marks on the surface on purpose to give it an interesting texture specific for hand work. Just like on the Mandalorian helmet, which I made in the previous video, there will be brass plated details here. I rub the hot surface of the shoulder with the brass brush. This magic is available even to the muggles, just buy such a brush. They are usually sold in jeweler supply stores. This is a steel pipe and this is why I need such long nails. 
I detach the blanks to rivet them into the holes in the shoulders. The lace for the movable connection of the gorget and shoulders will be inserted into these holes. This was also borrowed from the Middle Ages. I'm making the etching on the guard in Mandalorian language. This inscription translates to Family is more than blood. I am applying the Expectabrasus spell to the guards. These are the finishing touches before the final assembly. So, we are a bit crazy now. This is an Eucro Dwarf and this is a sort of Urukai. We don't have a Doctor's Note, but we are safe for the other people. I am riveting the leather straps with the roofing nails. The white head and small diameter make them a perfect option. And here is the sliding riveting I was talking about before. It should be riveted careful in order for it not to fall on one side. In the end I am hammering it with a snap hammer that has a hemispherical cavity. And this is a false rivet. It is attached from the side of the leather strap. From the outside it will look like the shoulder piece is completely assembled with the rivets. For a long time I couldn't get how the medieval shoulders can be made movable enough for fencing. Because if all of the details are assembled with the sliding rivets and without straps it limits the hand movements a lot. But once I saw a picture of the museum shoulders, where it was visible that the part of the rivets is fake and they are not holding any details. The assembly of the details is done. The final touch is to sew in the padding to the gorget. To do this I use isolon, which I stick to the leather. The leather sticks out a bit so that it would be impossible to scratch your neck with metal. I cover the isolon with the linen fabric. This way we see the materials close to medieval ones on the inside and the outside. This assembly principle doesn't contradict the logic of the fight with medieval weapons. You can see the movability of the elements with your own eyes. Of course, the armor will restrict movement a bit, but it must be able to make the necessary amplitude of hand movements. This is the principle I always pursue in the creation of functional armor. The shoulders came out small, let's say they are for fencing. I want to note that for the full function of the gorget, it must be securely fastened to the front of the gambeson. Now it is not attached, so it tends to slip up to my throat. This will be fixed by the breastplate, which I will do in the next video. Great honor and gratitude to all those who support this content on Patreon. Also thanks to all those who just watch and like this content. Even those who hate this content but still watch to the end. I don't understand what your perverts are doing here, but I'm glad you are here too. I want to note that during the war, the money collected from the Patreon I give to proven volunteers who deliver aid to our soldiers.